This video is going to be on replacing a power supply in a desktop computer. This is the power supply that I took out of my PC. When you have a computer that is running fine and all of a sudden it just goes dead, the fan doesn't come on or the lights don't come on, very good chance the power supply will be burned out. It's a very common thing. You could have a short on the motherboard. Um, some of the caps on the motherboard might be defective and the motherboard goes dead. Or you might also have a PC card, a video card, or something plugged in that shorted out and is causing the problem. Chances are very good it's the power supply that is the reason the computer is not working. It comes out with four screws that you have to remove. This is the back of the PC. You can see there are four holes over there. You just unscrew the screws. The power supply should come out once you open up the case. Be careful. Uh, you're going to have some wires that are plugged into your motherboard and your probably CD drive and some other things. So be careful as you unplug all of the cables. These are all the cables. This plugs into the motherboard and then these are the power cables, power connectors. So uh, what you want to do is you can just go out and buy a power supply or you can check to see if the power supply is really defective. And the way you do that is you have this big connector over here. You see that there is a green wire it's a green wire. You don't have the green wire on the other side. You have a green wire and you have a black wire on each side. So you want to put in, I've got a paper clip here if you've got wire that you can shove in there. You want to put one side into the green wire connector. You want to put the other side into either one of the blacks. Both of those are ground. So let me do that now. You can see that I've got my jumper in there now. The reason you need to do that is because when it's plugged into the computer these two uh, will be shorted out when you press the switch, so you need to have that connected. Do not do any of this with the power cord plugged in. Make sure that you're really careful so you don't kill yourself doing this. Okay, so what you need to do now is, now that you've got this wire shorted out, or these pins shorted out, you want to plug in your power cord, which I'm going to do over here. Don't put your fingers inside there when you're doing this. Plug in your power cord. And let's see, does the fan want to go on at all? Let me turn power off the switch, power it back up. It doesn't, oh, I don't know if you saw that. The fan kicks in for a second. Okay, let me try that one more time. Okay, so the fan's intermittent. Um, I know this power supply is defective, but let me show you what you can do now. You can probe with a power meter. I've got a power meter over here. So it's set to DC volts now. Um, you're going to have 12 volts and 5 volts on this power supply. So let's put the red probe into the red connector and then we're going to go the black which is going to be ground. Ground on either one of the blacks. So and let's see what we get. We get zero voltage. And let me go over to the yellow wire and we still get zero voltage. We don't get 12 volts. So we know the power supply is dead now. Make sure you watch all my other videos, please. If you want to link them to anything, that's fine. Do a thumbs up, a like, a subscribe. If you want to help me out, go to my channel page and click on the support button and leave me something if you want to. That's up to you. Okay, so here's another way that we can uh, find out what the problem is. You look at these capacitors. The reason these power supplies die is because of the capacitors, usually. Sometimes these coils burn up or the diodes in here burn up. Um, I'm trying to get a good picture here. I don't know if you can see it. We've got these capacitors over here. And if you... I think you can see it. You should be able to see it with the HD. Um, if you look, you can see that the caps, the tops over here, are kind of exploding out. They're moving upward like there's pressure in there. What that means is these capacitors are defective or going to be defective soon. That's a little flat. You can see that's the flat one. This is popping out. That's popping out. That's popping out. That's popping out. These capacitors are probably shorted out and that is why the power supply doesn't work anymore. Yeah, that's a good good picture over there. You can see how this is loading out a little bit. Now Pricing these capacitors. If you have a store locally where you can go in and buy these for 50 cents or a dollar, they don't cost that much. If you've got a store like that, good for you. 
Radio Shack is selling these for about two dollars, a buck and a half. So when I look at that, I go, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight. So that's eight dollars to buy this, to buy the parts. If you buy it online, you're probably talking ten dollars shipping, and you can buy a new power supply usually for about thirty, forty, fifty bucks. So it is usually not worth buying parts for these things. If you have access to cheap parts, good. But if you don't, it's probably more expensive to repair it, or it's just not worth it. So, let me uh, continue with the video by putting in a new power supply. I just bought this online. Most of these are pretty much the same. Stock power supplies are usually about 250 watts, which is what I had. Um, 380 obviously has more power. These things go up to 5, 6, 800 watts. If you're just running a standard PC and you don't have a lot of boards plugged in there, uh, you shouldn't need a massive amount of power, but there's not that much difference in the cost as you increase the uh, wattage. So let me take this out of the box. Okay, what do we have here? Oh, nice, it comes with a power cord. I didn't know that was going to happen. Um, what you need to be careful of when you're buying these things is you got to make sure you have enough power cords that will run your accessories. This looks like it's got SATA, which I did not want. Okay, it's got a SATA plug, it's got a a 12 volt plug, which is what I definitely need. The 12 volt is the most important. So that's going to save me right now. It's got two, two SATAs, two uh, 12 volt plugs, and then you have to look at this. Make sure that you're buying the right connector. Some of them come in 20, which is the old ATX. Some of them come in 24. Some of them are 24 with a breakaway thing. That's interesting that there's no wire in this one. There's no connector in here. Hopefully it's not broken or didn't pop out. Okay, so that's what you want to make sure is that you're buying the right connector and that you're buying a power supply that has the connectors that you need for 12 volt or uh, power for your SATA drives. Make sure that you have enough room to work with. You might have to unplug your uh, cables. Don't bang into your CPU. And now I'm going to insert the power supply. You insert it inside the case and then it will mount in to this opening over here and then you put the four screws on. It's a fairly simple process. You just take your power supply. This is smaller than the other one because it's going in much easier. So the case is smaller. You take your power supply, you put it in position, and then you tighten the four screws on the back of the case. The power supply is now in, and then you just want to tighten four screws that you took out. This power supply came with four new screws, but I'm using the originals. They seem to be working fine. So you want to mount the new power supply and then tighten these screws down. You're going to want to make sure that you plug the connector in to uh, this connector over here. So you want to route the wire around underneath the fan. Make sure that whatever wires you route are not going to get pinched. So I'm going to plug this power connector in. Then I'm going to plug in this main thing to the motherboard. Then I'm going to power this up and see if everything turns on properly. And after that, then I'll plug in all the uh, drives and see what happens. Now, if you remember, I was talking about... 20 pin and 24 pin. This is 24 pins. The old motherboards use 20, the new motherboards use 24. So since I don't need the extra two pins and it won't work, the newer ones, this connector slides off so that you're able to use one power supply or order one power supply to do everything. So now it's a 20 pin instead of a 24 pin and it should plug in properly. Let's make sure it does. And Yep, snap. Okay, so that works. What I'm going to do now, just to rush this video along, is I'm going to take the power cord and I'm going to plug it in and switch on the back is set right. The light just came on. Press the power button. and I'm sure you can hear some noise. And it's fixed. Now I have to plug in my CD drive and my hard drives and then we'll finish off the video making sure everything powers up properly. 
everything's plugged in now. The advantage of these new power supplies is that you do get the SATA, so if you're going to be swapping out over to a new SATA drive or new uh, SATA CD drive, you'll have the power connectors there, and if you've still got your old IDE, then you're able to power things up. So everything's plugged in now. I'm going to go connect the keyboard, mouse, and monitor, and we will see if this works, and if it does, then you'll know how to put it in a power supply which will only cost you about thirty forty dollars and you'll be able to save the labor cost of going to a store where they would probably charge you a hundred and some dollars hundred and fifty dollars to do this I've got the computer ready all the cables are plugged in I'm gonna power this thing up and you are gonna see with me at the exact same time if this repair worked and if the PC works now or not computer is I just plugged in the power cord Lights flashing, I hear a little bit of noise, let me press the power button. That's my noisy display card. Let's see. Alright, so it repaired the PC. It sees the drives, everything seems to be working, and that's how you fix a computer. Hopefully this video helped you, saved you a little bit of money. If it did, please again go to my channel page, click on support, and pop something in the uh, fan funding section. I would appreciate it. Good luck fixing your machine.